So in the previous video, we've said that there's three things built into the accounting system that allows us to check up on our sales. First is a trial balance, and we've looked at an example of trial balance in the previous video. The next one we said was debtors, and the third one was creditors. So we will now consider the debtors and creditors reconciliation. So one of the internal control measures to control whether transactions regarding debtors and creditors are correctly recorded are applied at the end of each month when the debtors and creditors list is drawn up, of which the totals must correspond with the balances in the debtors and creditors control account. So we basically record debtors twice in our books. First, collectively in the debtors and creditors control account, and secondly, individually in the debtors ledger, which will then appear on the debtors list. So the control accounts are merely summaries of all of the individual transactions regarding the debtors and creditors, and therefore the balances have to correspond with the totals of the list of the individual debtors accounts. So from the debtors and creditors ledger where the individual accounts can be found. I will simply take all of the final balances in each of those personal accounts and draw up a list that stipulates exactly how much they all owe me together. So this list, the total on this list must correspond with the balance in the control account. If these balances and the totals do not correspond, then it means that errors have been made in the bookkeeping process. So errors need to be tracked down and then corrected. It's impossible for our debtors and creditors control account to be different from the debtors and creditors list because it's the same information recorded twice. So it should give you the exact same answer. So if it doesn't, you know that errors were made and they needs to be corrected. It's very important to distinguish between the following. Now before we consider the following three things, please first think about the process that we are busy with. So when I talk about the process, I talk about the accounting process. Starting the accounting process will be our source documents. So information will be entered onto the source document. From the source document, it will be entered into journals. Now let's take one journal, for example. Let's say this is the CJ. Now the CJ has various columns and it has rows. So at the end of each month I will add up the columns and I will post the columns to the journals or to the ledger accounts. But I would also take each individual row to another ledger account. So the column totals will be taken to the general ledger whereas the rows would each be taken to the creditors ledger to the individual account of the creditor so from the journal you can already see I will post to two places either the general ledger if I post to the general ledger it is in other words posted to the control account so either the debtors control account or the creditors control account, depending if I'm busy with debtors or creditors. I will then also post to the debtors or creditors ledger. So remember, when I post to the debtors or creditors ledger, this is now the personal account of those debtors. Then from there, from the general ledger, I will draw up a trial balance. And from the debtors and creditors ledger, I will draw up a list. 
So when I do my reconciliation, I am basically reconciling my control account with that of my list. In other words, the totals in list is controlled with the totals in the control account to see if there's any errors. So when we talk about an error occurring, it is very important that you must think for yourself where did the error happen. In other words, if the error already happened in source document, then it means everything from source document downwards is now wrong. So it needs to be fixed in my journals, it therefore needs to be fixed in general ledger and in debtors or creditors ledger. So it will be fixed in control and it will be fixed in list. Let's take another example. Say for instance it was an error in my personal account of the data. Therefore the error is in here so it must be fixed on list only. It's, it's not an error there, it's only an error in the debtors or creditors ledger so fixed on list. So if you just think about this practically, it's actually very important. Last example. Let's say it was an error in the adding up of the total column here. Now the total column here gets posted to the general ledger. So when it's a, to when it's a problem in the total that was adding up here wrong, then it only needs to be fixed in the general ledger control account because that's where that information was posted to. If for instance it was the error was made in the individual entry, the line entry, and it was posted wrongly only to the creditors or the debtors ledger, then again I only need to fix it in the debtors or creditors ledger with, which is actually the list. So if you understand the flow and you can think about the flow practically, it should actually be very easy to determine where the error needs to be fixed. So let's con consider the three scenarios. The three scenarios says, firstly, maybe there is an error affecting the control accounts. Maybe there is an error affecting the total of the list. Or maybe the error is affecting both the control and the list. So when it's affecting the control, it sometimes happens that the total of the list is correct, but the balance in the control account is wrong. Therefore, the following examples can occur. Entries are made on the wrong side in the control account. So therefore, the error is in control. I need to fix it in control. Second, Entries are intended for a specific control account is not recorded into it. So therefore again, error in control, I fix it in control. Thirdly, maybe the balances of the control account was merely calculated wrong. So when I did my balances in control, it was wrong, so fix it in control. And lastly, the column totals, as we've just explained in the example, column totals of the subsidiary journals were wrongly added. Now remember the column totals are only posted to control, therefore the error would only be in control. Next, what if the errors only affects the list? So if something happened that the balance is in the control is now correct, but the problem is in the list. The following examples can be looked at. Firstly, the list is added up wrongly. So again, error in list, fix it only in list. Second, the balance of the debtors or creditors is transferred wrongly from the ledger to the list. So it's simply a, a wrong entry if, if when we copied it over. So again, error in list, fix it in list. Thirdly, the balance of the debtors or creditors is calculated wrongly in the personal account. So because the personal account is taken to the list, it will then automatically be an error only on the list. Lastly, maybe the amounts are posted wrongly 
from the subsidiary journal into the personal account, therefore it would be a problem in the personal account and then if it's problem in the personal account, it will affect the list as well. So therefore I correct the list. Then lastly, errors that affect both control and list. So it sometimes happens that both the balances in the control and list is wrong. For examples, transactions that were totally omitted from the journals. So it needs to be put into the journals. From the journals, the process after that still needs to be done. So it needs to be taken to both ledgers, general ledger as well as creditors or debtors ledger. Therefore, putting it into control and list. Secondly, Maybe amounts were wrongly entered already on the source document. So if the error is in source document, that error would already be in journals, would automatically be in the ledgers as well. So it needs to be corrected on control and on list. Lastly, maybe amounts entered wrongly on source documents. So either it could have been posted wrongly from the source documents or wrong in source documents, same effect. If it's wrong on source documents already, it would automatically be wrong in the process after that. So that means journals are wrong, needs to be fixed. Ledgers are wrong, needs to be fixed. So when an error is tracked down, it has to be determined whether it will only affect the control or only the list or maybe both of them. Only then can the mistakes be corrected. So let's consider the following example. You are provided with information to Park Merchants on the 30th of November 2015. The bookkeeper made a number of errors which caused the balances of the control account and the totals of the list to not correspond. Instructions. Take the given information into account and analyze the errors made under the given headings. Thus, to reconcile the balances of the control account and that of the list. So, number one, they tell us the provisional balances on the 30th of November for the control account, 4,778. For the creditors control account, 7,420. So, let's put those two balances in, into control for debtors and into control for creditors. Then the balances also appears in the list. So balance for debtors in list is 4,968 and for creditors it's 5,220. Number three, so the errors and omissions tracked. Firstly, there is a credit sales of 980 not recorded in the debtors journal. So credit sales has to do with my debtors, 980 not recorded in the DJ. So if it's not recorded at all, it means that I still need to go and put it into the DJ, therefore resulting in it needs to be post to both the debtors control account as well as the ledger account, data's ledger account. So I need to add the 980 to the control, but I also need to add the 980 to the list. Number 3.2 still has to do with my data's because the column of the data's allowances journal is added up with 180 Rand. The correct total should, however, be 380 Rand. So therefore, the debtor's allowances journal was added up with 200 Rand, too little. Now remember, when debtor's allowances is posted to my debtor's control account, it actually causes my debtor's control account to decrease. So therefore, I've now decreased my account only with 180, where I should have decreased it with 380. So I can clearly see that there's 200 Rand decrease too little. Because it's only the column also that is affected, the column tells me that the column would only be posted to the control account 
and not to the individual accounts of the data. So therefore, it only affects the control account that needs to be fixed with 200 Rand more decrease. Then number three is our first entry that has to do with our creditors. They say it's discount received 100 Rand from a creditor was not entered in the journal. So therefore I must still go and add it to the journal. After I've added it to the journal, it must still be taken to both of my ledgers. So I must put it in as a decrease in control and as a decrease in list. Because remember this is discount received, it is a decrease onto my accounts. Number 3.4 Discount of 70 Rand allowed to a debtor was correctly recorded in the journal, but when I was posting it to the debtor's personal account, it is wrong. So therefore, I can clearly see that the error is in the personal accounts of the debtor. Therefore, the personal account influences the debtor's list. So it needs to be fixed in the debtor's list by decreasing it further with 70 Rand. In 3.5, also an error in the debtor's list was added up with 320 Rand too much. So therefore the list needs to decrease further with an extra 320 Rand. Only the list and not the control account. Then for 3.6, the opening balance of the creditor's control is entered wrongly as 2,300 the correct opening balance should only be 2,100. So I wrote it in wrong 200 Rand too much in the control account. Therefore, I must simply go and decrease my control account with the extra 200 Rand. Then lastly, the credit purchases of trading stock was 1,000 Rand posted to the debit side of the personal account of the creditor. Now let's just consider what is the error here. If it's a creditor and something was bought, a purchase, it needs to be posted onto the credit side. But instead they took the thousand rand to the debit side, meaning that they are actually decreasing the liability where they should have done it as an increase. So again, the same as what we had in a previous example when we did the one for the trial balance, a thousand rand now needs to be corrected and I correct it by putting it onto the opposite side of the account. But when I've put it onto the opposite side of the account, I simply corrected the error. So now the thousand rand is gone, but nothing else has been entered. So I need to go and put through another thousand rand to actually record the purchasing of this trading stock so therefore to correct it i need to correct it in the control in the personal account of the creditor by putting in two thousand rand first thousand is to correct the error second thousand is to actually record the transaction so now the big test I add up my debtor's control account or column and I see I've got 5,558 Rand in there. When I add up my list, I see my list is also now on 5,558. Therefore, I can now clearly see that I have reconciled my list with my control account. So I have done what I should have done. Then for the creditors, I add up the creditors controller column and it gives me 7,120. When I consider the list, I take my list, three amounts, add them together and I see I get to 7,120. So therefore my list is reconciled with my control account, so therefore creditors is also in balance. Well done. Now let's look at a couple of exercises to come and practice this some more.